In this chapter, we're going to add image blocks into our content section. We've got a section open here. It's completely blank at the moment. But the reason we know that there's a section here is when we can see edit section and new layout in the top right hand corner. And also we can see add block here in the top left. And we're going to click on this button to add a new block to our page. And you may have guessed it, we're going to choose image. We can see this empty block, which has got a dotted line around it and a little plus in the middle. If we were to save and go into preview mode, that would disappear because there's no content being added to that section yet. But jumping back into edit, we can either choose to add placeholder images or even our final images in place first before we start manipulating the image blocks. We can also resize that image frame to get to the outline structure that we want. So with that image resized, I can choose to duplicate that section, meaning that I have another image at exactly the same dimensions. Let's add two photos into these image blocks. I'll double click on the first one and I have three main options or a fourth if we include adding a photo from our phone or tablet. So let's upload a file. We'll bring up our computer with the option to upload files directly from there. Select from library will allow us to view previously uploaded photos or previously selected photos from our stock library. Or we can choose to go straight to browse stock images. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to jump to the free images tab, which is from Unsplash. We can either then go to premium images where you pay by the photo via Getty, or alternatively, we can view previously uploaded images via my library. All of these options are available to you. The choose a stock photo will just jump automatically to this section. So let's add two nice scenic photos into each of these containers. First image is added. We can see at the moment it's not spanning to the full width of the image block. We'll come back to that in a moment. And let's add a second image. Once again, I'm going to browse stock images. Let's find something here. We'll go with this one. Okay, we can see that these images are floating. They're not really doing much on the page. There seems to be no overlying structure. So this is where we can go into the photo settings. And let's work through these one at a time. We can go into more editing settings here by going on the pencil icon. We can edit the link to make this link go to another page or external website or even document or email. We can align that photo to left, right or center within the container. A simple effect could be to go for something like this. Where both images are now aligned towards the center. But we still have so much unused white space left and right that we're going to go in one step further. We can align vertically, not needed in this one because the photo is already aligning top and bottom. We can pin the photo. This means that when we start scrolling through the page, the photo will stay in place. It's more of an advanced feature, so we can unpin that for now. Finally, as I mentioned before, we can duplicate the image or, of course, remove it. So let's go into the edit option where we can see more editing options for that photo. We've got focal point. If this photo goes into a letterbox mode, which we will in a moment, the focal point comes into play. We can attach a link to the image. And importantly for accessibility, we can add in a title for the image alt text. This is text in the background that will tell search engines and accessibility readers what the image says. Ideally, to get this right, we would have something like a photo of a beautiful landscape. Once we've got these settings in place, there's a built-in editor, which I will cover in a separate chapter. And if we go to design, we can now choose to fit the design to the frame. So the photo fits to the frame proportionately, or we can get it to fill the frame to get that full landscape look and feel. We can alternatively assign shapes where we could bring the handles of this image block in and have multiple circular photos. And we'll do that in just a moment as a further demo. But we're going to go back to fill and fill it to the bounding box of this frame. We could also choose to round the corners, either all corners at the same time. So this is a 50 pixel rounded corner, or we could round off each corner independently. So we could have rounded corners on the left, straight edge on the middle. And let's do this as an example to show a more advanced layout. So now I'm going to do exactly the same with this image on the right. Select it once, go into the edit options, open the design, and I'm going to fill that photo in the frame. 
Now we fill the photo in the frame, we can see the skyline's coming in a little bit high. So this is where I can change the focal point. So we can see 50% cloud, 50% mountain range. And I think we'll do the same with the photo on the left in just a moment. And we can see here the corner that it applies to. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. In this case, we want top right and bottom right, 250 pixels, to mirror the photo on the left. Before we finish up this area, I just want to change this focal point. So the mountain range is roughly the same, almost as if they're in two different scenes, but flowing on one from the other. Now we can go into edit section. And here I'm going to remove all gaps. Now we can see that this is like a two part image. Or I could go in and just add a tiny gap, but maybe go for two pixels in the middle. We can see a clear divide between them. And then we can choose to change the height of these images and notice how those rounded corners remain consistent. Okay, now we've got this effect in place. Let's duplicate this section, add a brand new section. I'm going to change the background color just so we can differentiate them. And this time we're going to do something quite different. We're going to have two circular photos. So let's go to the edit option. And instead of going to fill, we can go to shape and it defaults to circle. There are a couple of additional options here. We can stretch it. So if the frame increases in size, the photo will stretch to an ellipsis shape to expand to that container. We've also got image effects. For example, we can apply a film grain effect on each of these photos to make them come alive. I always use effects like these sparingly in a way that you have a reason to use them in the first place. Finally, then we can add some text blocks to go alongside our image blocks. And let's add a text block to the right of each of these. I'm going to add some placeholder text. Notice how it stretched these containers. We can change that by adjusting the bounded box here. And now I'm going to want to put this frame to align to the center. So we have some nice white space either side of the photo. With this section on the right, with this text block here, I'm going to make the first section bold. And now I'm going to duplicate that section, bringing it across to the right. By selecting all sections, I can now make sure that that text block goes all the way to the right hand side. And then adjust this so it goes to the center. It's now a case of playing around with it until we get a format that we're happy with. I'm aiming for the left and right sides to be consistent. I'm going to count the number of rows. Five there to make sure that our images are the same size. Once we're happy with that, we can reduce the bottom section up to make it more compact. And we have two very different image layout options here, but both are equally powerful and look fully bespoke being built from the ground up using Squarespace. Final steps, we're going to head over to mobile view. And now we can make sure that these are nice and compatible and align nicely on mobile versions. Just a little bit of fine tuning. I can really decide how I want these to be laid out on mobile. And this is not touching the desktop view at all. We now have our layout in place. Alternatively, I could reduce the width of the text content area and bring it up alongside the thumbnail image, making sure I've got plenty of space in between each of those sections. So it really is up to you how you want to format these content sections on both desktop and mobile. There's a lot of power at your fingertips, and it's a case of just playing around with the platform until you start building structures and systems that work for you. And if you want to speed up this process, I'd recommend heading over to our tool that we've built for rapid prototyping Squarespace structures that have these type of layouts already built into them, and that's squareforge.net. Just going to finish up this final section. And there we have it. Using multiple photos in different structures, but bringing in all key design elements that professional web designers use, like 
balanced white space, and allowing mirror impact and consistency through our defines. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. If you want to say in the future direction of the content that I'll be creating at Pixel Haze Academy and to get involved in our community, all you need to do is leave me your email address. We're looking to create our first community in the coming weeks, and I'm going to be throwing everything I've got at it. That includes our Moonshot Transformation Program, our entire library of online courses, the opportunity to engage with me in regular group sessions. There's more information in the description, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can develop this. Thanks again, and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.